Welcome to another episode of Simmer Clips. And today's topic is inspired by the new version of our flagship course, server-side tagging in Google Tag Manager. And let's take a look at what the question today is. How do I get geolocation data in GA4, even if I choose to hide the visitor's IP address in server-side Google Tag Manager? So this is a great question because it kind of brings together a lot of different things. First of all, Google Analytics 4 uses your IP address to geolocate the user. So if you send your user's IP address to GA4, GA4 will use their own geolocation servers to determine what the country that user is visiting from is. And this is a very undetailed, fragile approach in general because people use VPNs, they use proxies, and their IP address is generally not that reliable as a geolocation signal. But it really is the best thing that these analytics platforms can do unless you provide that geolocation information manually in which case you'd first need to ask the user where are they browsing from. But GA4 also offers you the option of completely hiding the user's IP address for security and privacy reasons. And this, this can be done through server-side GTM very easily. So what if you still want that geolocation data from the IP address, but you don't want to send the IP address to Google Analytics 4? Well, in this topic, we'll take a look at an interesting kind of differential privacy approach to this. In server-side GTM, we're going to look at what the country of the user is based on their request headers and App Engine automatically geolocates the user. And then we're going to take a generic IP address from that country and use that as the user's IP address. So we're hiding all the users from Finland behind the same address. We're hiding all the users from the United States behind the same IP address and so on. And in this way, we're hiding the user in the group but we're still getting country level geolocation data in GA4. And it's quite easy to do, and I'll show you how to do it in this video. So the way that I built this list, and I'm sharing all the files in the article that you can find from the video notes, there are some databases online from which you can pull the IP ranges per country. So for example, this particular country IPA database is the one that I used. It has hundreds of thousands of IP ranges for 242 countries, and it's quite frequently updated. So I pulled the JSON dump, which is a huge JSON file. Then I ran it through Python. And for every country, I pulled one single IP address. And I had to make sure that the IP address actually matches the country. So I pulled the IP addresses against this free geolocation API until there was a match with the location of the IP and the one that the dump database dump claimed it was for. So why did I have to do this? Well, for some weird reason, and this goes a bit beyond my realm of expertise, the same IP address range can actually resolve to different countries depending on the geolocation API you're using. For example, if I use the iplocation.net to find the geolocation of the IP address I've chosen for United States, so this is a generic IP address from the US, if I do the lookup, this shows you the results from different IP geolocation services. So IP2 location returns that the country was United States, but IP info says it was Hong Kong, DBIP says it was Taiwan, and so on. So we have these different services telling us different results. Now, the only thing that matters is what does Google Analytics 4 use, and I don't know. So you'll have to test and see. That's why we're also sending the country as a custom dimension so that you can compare in your data what the custom dimension value is to the geolocated country. And if there's a difference, you might need to tweak those IP addresses and choose some other IP address for that country. So this isn't a static solution. It's something you should keep updating. You might even build a cloud function or something that constantly checks a fresh version of the IP address based on its country geolocation data or something. The whole point of this exercise is to show you how you could do this, but it's not necessarily the absolute best way to do it. So anyway, once you have the IP list per country, what I've done next is build a simple lookup table. So in this lookup table, we take the country code from the incoming App Engine header. So we're using App Engine in this case, but in the article notes, I've also added how to do this in Cloud Run, for example. What you need is a variable that returns the two letter country code for the user. And if you're using some other service than Google Cloud, then you'll just need to figure out how your cloud service does the geolocation of the user or how it could do that geolocation. Most cloud services do offer some kind of enrichment service for this, or you could just use a geolocation API to enrich the data yourself. Then we map the country code to the generic IP address I got from the database dump. Once the variables are in place, 
you can go to transformations and we're going to create a new transformation. So transformations modify the data generated by the server side client. So the tags that consume this data will only see the data that was transformed rather than the original data. So what we want to do is we want to create a new augment event transformation. So we're going to choose augment event from the transformation type. We're going to add a new row and it's going to be called IP underscore override. This is the event data key that determines the user's IP address. And this is what GA4 tags use, for example. And the value will be the return value of the lookup table variable that maps the user's country code to a generic IP address of that country. We want this transformation to apply to all possible tags and all possible scenarios because we want this to be a container-wide thing. If you want to restrict it just for GA4 tags, you could choose those from the affected tags list. Let's call this something snappy, and then we'll save the transformation. Now we're going to go to the GA4 tag. So in the tags list of the server container, you should already have a GA4 tag. If you don't, feel free to create one. And in the GA4 tag, make sure that the redact visitor IP address is set to false because we want the visitor IP address to be sent. It just won't be the actual visitor IP. It will be the one from the transformation. Under event parameters, we're going to add a new custom parameter. So we're going to add a parameter called custom country. And in this case, we're just going to send the two letter country code value to Google Analytics 4. If you're wondering what the request X app engine country variable is, which we also use in the lookup table, it's a request header variable for app engine setups, which pulls the value of the X app engine country request header, which app engine automatically adds to all requests. And this contains the two letter country code. And I'll show you how it works when we go to preview mode. So now in GA4, we have our custom parameter. We are allowing the visitor IP address to go through. And then we have the transformation that maps the user's IP address to a generic IP address of the country the user is supposed to be from. So now we can go to preview mode with service IGTM. And then we're just going to send a request to the server container. And now let's take a look at all the different bits of information we have in the server container. This is the incoming GA4 request. Let's take a look at the incoming request first. First thing you can see is that the this is my IP address. It's in the HTTP headers from the browser to the server. It hasn't been faked. It hasn't been spoofed. It hasn't gone through a VPN or anything. Here you can see how App Engine automatically geolocates the user. So it adds the country code into the header. So we use this country code to resolve the lookup table. If we then choose the page view event and go to variables, and here you can see that the lookup table takes the country code FI and maps it to a generic IP address from Finland. And now if we go to the tags tab and open the GA4 tag, scroll down to its transformations and choose the transformation, you can see how the original value of the IP override, which was my actual IP address, is replaced with the generic IP from Finland. And now the most important part. Let's go to the outgoing requests to GA4. Here, look for the UIP parameter, and you can find it here. And now you can see that it's set to the generic address from Finland. And you can also find the custom country event parameter set to FI. So we've successfully changed my IP to a generic Finnish IP address and send that information to GA4. So now the question is, how does it work in GA4? Well, we have to go through BigQuery intraday data to take a look at if this even works. So here I have a custom query where I'm looking for event timestamp, event name, the full geolocation information, and then the value of the custom country event parameter. I'm just going to copy my client ID or just the first part of the client ID. I'm going to add it to the query. And then I'm going to run the query. And here we have the results. We have the geolocation data. So we have the continent, Europe, country, Finland, region, Uusima, Helsinki, and so on. And for the custom country, you can find the FI value here. So this row, the one with the custom country, is the hit that we collected through service IGTM. The rest are just dummy data that I did before when testing. So you can see that the custom country in this case maps nicely. The app engine country for my actual IP address matches the country from the dummy IP address. And GA4 did not receive my actual IP address in this case. 
So we managed to do the obfuscation. So take a look at the article that comes with this video because I've added some additional thoughts there. Like I said, the most difficult part will be in keeping this list up to date. But this is one way to do differential privacy with GA4, but it doesn't kind of solve the main problem, which is that IP-based geolocation is just simply not very accurate. It just lets you use the IP geolocation information without exposing the user's actual IP address.